Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. And welcome indeed here to theCUBE in our coverage of VMworld 2019. We are in the Moscone Center in San Francisco. They're open, they're back in business, and so is VMware. We're watching the folks stream out from this morning's keynote session, Pat Gelsinger hosting that session, and, and it was an impressive setup, to say the least. Uh, thousands packing that ballroom downstairs for a plethora of announcements, all from Pat Gelsinger. I'm John Walls, Justin Warren joins us. We haven't been together for a while, it's good to see it's you. It's been a little while, yeah. How have you been? been? I've been well, I've been well. Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised they brought us back together after the last hour. Oh, well, we, let's not talk about that incident. Well, I thought it went so well, <laughs> we just ended on a high note. Uh, but it is a pleasure to be with Justin. Always we'll be with him throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, our coverage here. We're joined right now by two guests, Paul Seville, who is the SVP of Network and Technology Solutions at Century Link, and Omar Suna, who is the Director of Digital Products at GE Healthcare. And gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Good to have you here on theCUBE. Thank, Thank you, you, John. Um, yeah. First off, let's just, just give me your, both, your take just on VMworld 2019, what you're looking for, what you're expecting, and kind of the early vibe that you have going on. Paul, why don't you take that first? Sure, I, you know, one of the things I've really been impressed with is how VMware is expanding the kind of open nature of its relationships. It's, it's developing its ecosystem, really broadening it out. It's making a number of acquisitions to enable new capabilities. And we're really excited about that. CenturyLink and VMware have been partners for, I think, uh, around 12, 15 years as we've been building out our own cloud services. And so it's a very exciting time we to see all of this technology coming together in the way that it is. Yeah, I love the way you put it to acquisitions, uh, Pat made a little comment about that. It's like, I can't wait to find out who I'm going to buy next. Yes. And uh, they've uh -huh. been, certainly been in a full speed ahead mode for the past year, year and a half. Uh, Omar, your take, early. Yeah, I mean, I think I uh, look at it from a healthcare uh, solutioning perspective, and it's exciting to see this level of technology and kind of the building out of the ecosystem and what can it enable for healthcare consumers, um, especially with a big focus around privacy and uh, data management. So I think some of their, and security, some of their latest acquisitions could actually help grow that ecosystem and offer more options specific to the healthcare industry. All right, now let's talk about your portfolio at work then a little bit uh, at GE Healthcare. Uh, obviously, health systems, healthcare is a, a huge user, you know, these days, if you will, it, it's kind of simplifying it a bit. But, but just talk about what your concerns are, what your attention is, and kind of the things that are keeping you up at night these days in terms of healthcare and what you're doing in the IT space. Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, you know, when we look at our customer environment globally, uh, you know, we tend to uh, kind of summarize some of the key challenges for our customers around three pillars. Um, access, so being able to provide access to all the patients that need it regardless of uh, uh, location. Um, with, uh, with aging population in a lot of developed countries, with also a lot of uh, people having the means to receive more proactive healthcare, it is challenging the health systems to be able to provide adequate access to, to patients. Uh, capacity. Um, providing capacity with the resources, including the human capital resources that health systems have. So how do you free up uh, your specialists to make sure that they're able to provide the right level of patients who need it, uh, patient care for, for the patients that need it, as well as clinical efficacy. How do we help with software applications, with technology, to help reduce the variation of care? and improve patient outcomes, uh, regardless where the patient is receiving care, whether in the rural community or, or in advanced uh, academic medical centers. Mm. So we try to kind of think of uh, our solution technologies as helping our customers solve for, for access, capacity, and clinical efficacy. Yeah, so a lot of healthcare, it's kind of a retail setup in that there's lots of hotels, you know, there's hospitals and, and other allied health professionals who have lots of different locations that they need to provide healthcare from, and that, that technology needs to live where the patients are and where the doctors are. So it was interesting to see in the keynote uh, earlier this morning talking about edge and different kinds of edge as well. We've got, uh, we've got thin, medium, and thick edge uh, according to VMware. So how do you see that, that rise of edge computing affecting the way that you, you deal with healthcare? 
Yeah, I mean, tremendous actually opportunity for us, and GE is working on, on capitalizing on the technology, on edge technology, to allow us to bring in AI application right to where kind of within the customer uh, network. And that is, uh, that's helping us solve for a lot of concerns around uh, private security as well as moving large data sets up to the cloud to process, uh, to be able to get benefit uh, out of uh, um, algorithm and uh, additional applications. Hmm. So that's actually an exciting area. And um, I agree with you, I mean, we're seeing more and more large distributed healthcare uh, networks in uh, In the US we've definitely seen huge merger and acquisition movement that we continue to see uh, and consolidation and we also see that globally uh, with regional uh, delivery uh, networks coming up and, and being able to have software applications live within this distributed network and provide information for the right uh, clinician at the right time is a big, uh, is a big initiative for us. And, um, and for us, this makes a huge difference in the way our providers are able to deliver care for their patients. Yeah. This seems like a, an ideal opportunity for the folks at CenturyLink to help you with that. Absolutely. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah that's right. I mean, uh, CenturyLink really, to that point, sees this uh, landscape evolving rapidly. And we even have a phrase internally we use that, that, that the network is the data center. We believe that in the future, uh, compute is going to be distributed so widely in, so, in such a broad geography and dropped in places where it's most efficient to run it and where it's most efficient to connect it with network that really the, the data center as we think about it today becomes this very uh, widely distributed platform that, uh, that is connected together with high performance networking solutions and that's part of what we're working with GE Healthcare on. I, I'm old enough to remember when the network is the computer was the, the slogan that we yeah, were all uh -huh. following now. And it seems that it's actually coming true now, where we have this, this idea of it's not just cloud and it's not just data centers, it's, and it's not just edge, it's actually a combination of all of them. And you need to be able to deal with that technology wherever it needs to live. Which is, I think, a, is a positive change from, a, from what we were talking about a few years ago, where it seemed to be, we'd had to make one choice. Now yes. the choice is, well actually you need a bit of everything. Tell me uh, about your decision, or at least in, in, in terms of on-prem, off-prem, yep. and and healthcare. I, I would assume uh, extremely sensitive, obviously, to security concerns and and uh, management and certain yeah. policies about who can access what, where, when, and how, whatever. How are you going about making that decision in this new multi-cloud environment, this hybrid cloud environment, when people are making migrations yeah. you know, with their businesses and they're and they're going off-prem? But you, I would assume, have to be a, a lot more sensitive or more sensitive to other factors than perhaps other businesses have to be. Yeah, we definitely do. Uh, there is, um, you know, with regulations, uh, you know, um, and for example, in Europe, GDPR, there's in-country regulations around where data resides. Um, all of that kind of plays a factor in customer adoption of technologies and where they're comfortable. Uh, we talked to a lot of CIOs in the, in the healthcare uh, uh, sector, and a lot of them say, hey listen, we're on a journey, we're used to uh, hugging our servers, we're used to controlling it, and, um, and you know, technology has evolved, but in terms of our policies, um, ability to accept liability of data breaches and what, uh, what technology providers are willing to sign up for, all of that kind of plays a role in that journey. Like Justin to mention, it is actually a, a you know, developing an ecosystem where you have a combination of uh, on-prem and off-prem is a lot of where healthcare um, health systems are investing their money. So we're seeing certain data that resides on-prem that is mission critical uh, versus more historic data uh, can go into um, you know cloud technology, cloud storage technology, and others. Mm. Um, but th there's no doubt that we're at an inflection point. We're seeing a lot more health systems sign up to cloud-based SaaS applications, um, invest in, um, um, in private cloud uh, uh, hosting uh, services, invest in also public cloud hosting services. And, um, and all of that actually will create, as a software uh, uh, provider, all that could actually help us create more opportunities and more solutioning for our customers, uh, leveraging some of the cloud computing uh, power that would allow us to develop uh, newer applications. Uh, so it's actually exciting, it's a journey with our customers. You know, we're choosing to kind of be alongside of our customers and help them. Uh, doing a lot of education, 
and, uh, and being able to have a relationship with CenturyLink, uh, be, be able to see the advances and uh, the availability of resources that CenturyLink makes uh, available for us as well as uh, uh, other partners that we have help us really make sure that we're able to build the right level of technology meeting the healthcare uh, customer needs. So Paul, fill in the gaps then a little bit about where CenturyLink is in trying to solve this, I wouldn't say a dilemma, but it certainly is a puzzle of some sort, right? As decisions yeah. are made about what's going to be offloaded, what's not, you know, how are we going to access, what do we allow? How do you see CenturyLink's role when you have a customer like Omar, like GE Healthcare, uh, coming to you with, with their unique needs and addressing those? Sure, well, as unique as GE Healthcare is in the healthcare industry, there are some common characteristics about how uh, we are seeing enterprise customers look at these situations. And one of them is that, place and compute on the premise itself, that, that is the, generally the most expensive real estate that, uh, that an enterprise has. When it, when it has to go in the hospital, when it has to go at the retail store location, uh, and a lot of enterprises today are doubling the amount of compute and storage that they're having at their, at, at their premise locations every year because the volume is just growing so much. That's becoming a problem because you don't want your you don't want your hospital becoming a bigger and bigger data center, so to speak, right? And so the way that, that we're approaching the problem and working with these is, and VMware was actually you know, expressing a very similar viewpoint about, about the edge and about how the thick edge and the thin edge, and the, the thin edge of the customer premise is where you want to have the lightest load, but you want to have the most critical applications that are sitting there. You want to have the information that you have to protect the most, uh, in a most guarded way uh, that's, that's most important for your operations there. But from there, you can more efficiently run things from a, from a distance backing out, going all the way back to the public uh, cloud core, if you connect it with high performance networking from end to end. And so what CenturyLink has been doing is putting together these solutions that make that balance of trade, so to speak, between the cost of compute, the cost of where you have to put it, to where it, it's best can be housed, what kind of latency performance that it needs to have to, to meet it to the performance specification, all the way back to the public cloud design and how to tie it into the public cloud. And that's where we've been building our competency and, and the solutions we've been putting together for customers. Nate, you mentioned the need for high performance networks in there, so I've, I've got to ask you about 5G. From what, I, from what I know about 5G, it looks like the, the kind of situation that you have with, with healthcare, where you've got lots of mobile tablet devices, you've got lots and lots of other actual equipment IoT devices in a healthcare situation. That seems like an ideal use case for 5G. Is, is that what 5G is, is actually for? Is the hype real? Well, if 5G is certainly going to transform the world in terms of its ability to provide wireless high bandwidth connectivity and low latency connectivity to devices. But edge compute is not about 5G. You can have edge compute without 5G. It's, in fact, it's a bit of a myth that, that uh, edge compute can't arrive until 5G comes because edge compute is something that is available to do today. And in fact, CenturyLink is deploying edge compute solutions with, by basically building fiber into enterprise uh, locations and then housing compute at different areas of the network at the point that's most, uh, that's most optimal for the solution. Mm. Using wire, and there are a variety of wireless solutions that can be used in that campus environment other than 5G to connect wireless devices back securely and safely to that, to that edge compute that sits there. But it seems like it, it, it still should be, or at least looks like it could be a game changer in what it's going to allow in terms of, I guess, advancing edge computing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, I mean, mm -hmm. you're still going to provide new capabilities and, right. and yeah. new reach, new functionalities that, that don't currently I exist. I take Paul's point though, because there are other technologies like Wi-Fi 6, for example, right. which is, it's basically the same thing as 5G, it just uses a different radio uh, communications mechanism. But, and I also take your point that you can do edge computing today, absolutely. Right. Um, you mm -hmm. can put computing in, into retail situations and you can have, I mean, we have tablet devices now, so we, re we have laptops, so we kind of have edge computing. We, we always have, it just now, now it has a name. Yes, that's correct. All right, so tell me before we, we let you go, uh, Catalyst Award winner uh, from CenturyLink and VMware. Uh, Paul, first off, let's talk about what, how you assess that, you know, how, what's the determination, the criteria for that, and then I'm going to let you crow a little bit, Omar, about receiving that award, but tell us about the Catalyst Award first. Yes, well we call it the Catalyst Award because when you think about it, a catalyst is something that excites a, a chemical process. Technically, that is the, the definition of catalyst, but Catalyst, in the way we view it, is something that, that uh, we wanted to recognize a person or a company 
that we felt like was really driving innovation, that was really solving a problem and working also collaboratively together with VMware and CenturyLink in solving some of these problems. And so we, we looked at uh, GE Healthcare and really felt like uh, in, a, in a place where, where certainly we have seen such great advances in healthcare administration and ability to save people's lives, oddly, uh, medical errors is becoming an increasing amount of now the problems in terms of death rates because there's just, there, while we have so many ways to solve problems, so many ways to address it, the, they're, they're, uh, that, that portion of what's causing uh, deaths is actually on the rise. Mm -hmm. And so GE Healthcare is, is taking that techno the technology that they're deploying and helping to solve that problem. That's why we wanted to recognize Omar, Omar and the company today. And, and that, an honor uh, for you, I would, I, I, would, uh, I would assume you're all pretty proud of that. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, and thank you. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it was really fantastic to be recognized by, uh, by our partners. And, uh, and a great testimony to the team at GE Healthcare. You know, our, uh, our team wakes up in the morning and our mission is to improve lives in the moment that matters. A lot of our technology is used in mission critical and, uh, and the way we're able to deliver that to our customers relies heavily on our ability to leverage advances in technology and be able to improve our ability to deliver different applications for our customers. So it has actually been fantastic. The relationship has been uh, tremendous for us. Uh, where we have hosted our solutions in CenturyLink, the, uh, the level of support that we have received have really enabled us to deliver important uh, applications for our customers and meet their, uh, their SLAs and meet their uh, clinical use cases and the needs of uh, software uptime. So that has been uh, tremendous for us. Well, congratulations. Thank uh, you. Well done, thanks for the time, both of you. Thank, thank and, you. And uh, enjoy the show, enjoy San Francisco. We got good weather this week. That's right. So yeah. Get out and enjoy that. Thank you, Paul and Omar. Thank Back with you. more on theCUBE, you're watching our coverage here live in San Francisco at VMworld 2019.